What's going on everybody? It's your boy Rick One Ball coming at you again with yet another classic. If you don't know what I'm doing, I'm making sure I cover each and every NBA game to provide you with up-to-date sports analysis as well as my opinion on these games. Let's get into the game. The Utah Jazz versus the New Orleans Pelicans. And this game will get downright scary for Pelicans fans. Now, now, matter of fact, this game will get downright scary for all NBA fans. I'm going to get to that reason in a second. But what I must speak on right away is the chemistry that I'm seeing between C.J. McCollum and Zion Williamson. I find it a tad bit strange last year when Zion was rehabbing. C.J. McCollum said, nope, Zion haven't spoken to me. Nope, I haven't gotten any calls from Zion. It, it damn sure don't look like it. It looked like they've been playing together from year, for years. CJ is throwing Zion half-court lob passes, and Zion is finishing with so much aggression. And what I'm seeing from this New Orleans Pelicans squad with Brandon Ingram and an Alvarado on the perimeter, this team is so fun and so exciting to watch. But everybody know injury plays a big, big role in NBA games. And it will get really scary for Pelicans fans in the in first quarter when Brandon Ingram damn near got socked in his face by his own teammate accidental by the way Brandon Ingram will leave the game but come back in the second quarter only to leave again and stay out but what I must also say about the Utah Jazz, they're a resilient bunch, and they're not going to lay down just because you're coming in with stars. The, I call them the land of misfit toys because people are forgetting that Jordan Clarkson was the sixth man of the year. People are forgetting that Kelly, uh, Kelly Olenek is a downright hustle player to do anything that it takes to win, win and Colin Sexton. He was the heart and soul of that uh, Cleveland Cavaliers team before Darius Garland hit his stride and they sent uh, Sexton packing. So just don't forget about this Utah Jazz as now they are 3-0. I'm prop up with me this season on Thrive Fantasy. This is where I do all of my betting, y'all. See, with Thrive, you can cut out all the endless hours of research and focus on the top-tier athletes that has the most impact on the game. Choose 10 out of the 20 player props and build your lineup. Each prop is assigned a fantasy value for both over and unders. Hit the most props and rack up the most points for your share at the prize pool. Thrive has over 200,000 in prizes weekly, and if you use my promo code one ball, they'll even match your initial deposit up to $100. So get into one of those contests and use my promo code one ball, and they'll match your initial deposit up to $100. Back to the show thing to always watch out for Zion for is that he's a forward and all of his points are going to come either in the key or finishing at the rim. Well, sometimes that could come back and bite you because clearly he's not a three-point shooter. He's not even a perimeter shooter. That's really nothing even to talk about. He goes up for a dunk in the fourth quarter and gets challenged by Jordan Clarkson, which is nothing malicious. It was all clean, by the way, and, and Zion hits the ground like a ton of bricks. They're calling it a hip contusion and Zion is out effective immediately. So you got Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson both out, We're both having good games, by the way. And so we, we hoping nothing but the best for Zion Williamson. But C.J. McCullum would rally, rally the rest of the Pelicans to try to finish this thing in close. And it would go into overtime. C.J. McCullum took the reins, hit nothing but jumpers, uh, was going to the basket at will, hit a fadeaway uh, runner, and he kept the game close. But Jordan Clarkson would come down the stretch for the Utah Jazz and show you why he has that Eddie House type of three-point motion. Anybody know who Eddie House is? Get in the comments. Eddie House. He got that similar, similar quick-release type of motion and he will win the game for the Utah Jazz 122-121. For everyone that thought the Utah Jazz would tank just because they don't have Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, you got a whole nother thing coming. And this is why everybody in the NBA, I mean, they're NBA players. They're still good. I mean, even though they don't got that, that marquee name, that marketable name that you think is so marketable, Utah Jazz right now are 3-0. So it's something to look out for. I appreciate you guys for rocking with me. You already know who it is. It's your boy Rick One Ball. Like, comment, subscribe.